Hey chess fans, in today's video we're going to check out another fantastic game played in round 2 of the 45th Chess Olympiad. It's from the match between Egypt and Uzbekistan. And Uzbekistan is a powerhouse in the world of chess. Remember that Olympia two years ago in Chennai, India, when Uzbekistan surprised the entire chess community by winning the gold medal. Now in this event, of course, they will feel the pressure to repeat that uh, success. But anyway, they have a very young, ambitious squad being captained by a former world champion, Vladimir Kramnik. But on the top board, they have also world's number five, Nodibek Abdusatorov. He's playing with the black pieces in this game against Adam Fauci from, uh, from Egypt. And uh, well, it's a very, very instructive game with a lot of uh, interesting both positional as well as tactical uh, ideas. So let's dive straight into the action. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, not to miss any of the rest of the action in uh, in this event. So here we go. Fauci plays with the white pieces and goes for the move e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. And we have the Italian opening, which I have covered. I cannot remember, but hundreds of times on the on the channel um it's of course the italian opening i'm not saying that i'm getting bored with it but you know it leads always to this kind of uh, type of positions we are familiar with like bishop c5 knight f6 usually it's the kind of uh, slow game we we get to see now for a change we get a somewhat different approach by uh, by black as abdus Sotorov goes for the move d6 now this is uh, quite a, a solid move uh, has the drawback that the bishop can no longer be developed to an active square like c5, but uh, it does avoid a lot of uh, theory. Here, white has different ways of playing. White needs to decide on how to proceed, opt for the quiet game with c3, d4, maybe c3, d4 is uh, also a possibility. In any case, uh, Fauci goes here for the move d4, um, so that after pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, um, well, knight f6, knight c3, we do have some sort of Philidor structure with a pawn on e4 versus a pawn on d6. So white can always count on, uh, on a small, pleasant um, uh, space advantage. But as I said, black is rock solid. His position doesn't contain any weaknesses. And uh, there are some simple developing moves to be made. So black goes bishop e7, castling kingside by both sides. And here the bishop comes to, uh, to f4. So here again, a lot of uh, different ideas. Uh, but I'm quite impressed by uh, Black's next move. He goes for the move knight e5, attacking the bishop. The bishop goes to b3. And now, interestingly, Black decides to put a pawn on c6. Why does Black put a pawn on c6? Well, it's just to cover all these squares on the fifth rank so that never any time uh, one of White's uh, minor pieces can jump to it. On a good day, Maybe black is able to break free with the move d6, d5. But that is really far away from now because also the knight on e5 will be hanging in that case. So it's just a move for the, for the future. Um, and well, there are other ideas as well. Here, rook e1 was played. Rook e8, it's very logical that both sides are placing uh, the rooks on, um, on the e-file. Why? To support the pawn on uh, e4, black to potentially uh, attack the pawn on e4. And well, I think this is actually a very important moment in the game already on move 11. So white has a space advantage. White should keep all the pieces on the board. That's generally the right strategy when uh, playing uh, with a space advantage. And I think it does make sense to restrict the mobility of the enemy's pieces. So moves I would seriously consider are something like a4 uh, to uh, prevent black from ever playing the move uh, b5 or to play the move h3 to cover the g4 square. So never any time a knight is gonna jump there or the bishop comes out to, uh, to g4. I think that is kind of uh, useful. And white needs to make some moves to further improve his position, to move the queen, to get a rook into the game. That's the way to go. But instead, white decides here to play the move knight f5. And sometimes you, you get to see this, uh, this idea. It's an interesting move, like in case of taking on f5, white takes back with the f pawn, with the e pawn, getting double pawns on the f file, opening up the file for the rook, attacking the, the knight on, uh, on e5. But you do get an interesting clash as the board will be divided um, in two parts with an open e file. Um, Anyway, there's no need to capture yet. I like the move bishop f8. This is also quite thematical in 
uh, in a lot of structures. One of the main points of rook e8 is to be able to draw back with the bishop. So the bishop is guarding the king side, the rook is supporting the knight. But frankly speaking, I fail to understand what white is uh, doing here uh, with the move knight e3. He's dropping back voluntarily with the knight, so the knight was on d4, now it is on e3. I don't really understand this maneuver. I think that on d4 it's better placed, but I guess that uh, White didn't like uh, potential issues with the move d6, d5 coming up, undermining the pawn on e4, when, okay, you got to think about how to save the knight on, uh, on f5. So, well, knight e3 played, but uh, first of all, I don't think the knight is doing that much uh, here on e3, and that also obstructs the rook on e1. Now, Black seizes the initiative with the move b5, with ideas to go b4 to hit the knight. After knight goes away, the pawn on e4 will be hanging. And now, okay, you may consider playing a3 when there's something like a5 and there's still this possible um, uh, pawn break with uh, b5, b4. But in any case, there follows the move bishop takes e5. And I already said that I don't like trading off minor pieces, but especially this one, I don't like giving up bishops in open positions. And I think this is, in fact, a serious mistake. But the question is here for black, how to recapture. And Abdul Satorov, just decided here to take with the pawn. It's a very nice positional move. As you have a symmetrical position, the bishop can now uh, come to a more active square, maybe c5, maybe b4. This is looking fine for black like risk-free. But much stronger, this is interesting to understand, much stronger is the, to recapture with the rook. So you do exert pressure against the pawn on e4. And well, I'm trying to understand why uh, white didn't, uh, why black didn't uh, recapture in, in this way, because it comes very naturally to, uh, to me. Um, first of all, if you do play something like f3 to uh, protect the pawn, you're missing your dark squared bishop. So I like this plan with queen b6, and if you get out of that uh, pin, uh, something like d5 is incredibly strong. You can't take on d5 as it will hang the knight on e3, black is even threatening to play d4. Here, black is breaking free with his uh, pawn uh, move. So that cannot be the reason. Then I was thinking maybe white, um, uh, maybe black didn't like white's move f4 to hit the rook, but then the rook goes back and well, maybe there's something like e5. And okay, if uh, you take and the queens come off, you do take back, white is probably doing fine. But here again, the key move, which was probably overlooked by Abdul Satorov, is queen b6. Again, with that same idea to exert pressure against the knight on e3, avoiding the exchange of queens. Now you're about to take on e5. If you do take on f6, there's rook takes e3. And well, there's nothing uh, going on here. Like the center is falling apart. And um, well, black is in actually in, in good shape. There's nothing white can, uh, can do here. So I thought that was an instructive moment, but okay, this was not played in the game. Let's see what happened there. Pawn takes e5. Queen f3, so white is looking for possibilities to set up some sort of uh, aggressive play on the king side. Therefore, g6 played to uh, take away that uh, square f5. White goes for the move a4 to uh, clarify the situation on the queen side. Now b4 is played anyway. And what white is trying to do now, and that it's going to take some time, is to uh, get the knight to a better square. So knight a2, bishop c5, the bishop comes uh, to an active square, knight c1. Black goes for the move a5 to protect the pawn so that after knight d3, obviously the knight is better placed than where it uh, was a few moves ago on, on c3, attacking the bishop, but the bishop comes to d4. And I think this bishop is black's main pride in, in this position. It does exert a lot of pressure long term. There are no immediate threats, but keep an eye on, on this bishop in the game. You also do pressurize the pawn on, uh, on b2, even though it's still defended. I think that thanks to the bishop on d4, uh, you're kind of neutralizing white's uh, potential uh, play here. So white goes h3, king g7, that's a nice move to uh, protect the knight, so that after a rook ed1, maybe the other rook could have gone to, uh, to that square as well. Hard to say what is best, but it's clear that white has a other idea in mind with that uh, rook from, um, from a1. Queen c7 played over protecting. The pawn getting out of the d-file looks quite sensible. And here white goes for the move c3. So white really tries to play very actively. Like you can take on c3, which was played by Abdul Satorov. And now the pawn on c3 is hanging. But Abdul Satorov decides not to take it. Because after 
let's say uh, bishop takes c3, there's rook a c1. And thanks to that pawn sacrifice, all of white's pieces, they're becoming active. There's pressure down the c-file. If the, the bishop comes to d4, well, you have idea like uh, like knight d5, uh, for instance. And, uh, well, there's counterplay. Um, despite being a pawn down, I think white is quite active and has chances to, to keep fighting. So rather than taking the pawn, black tries to uh, play for a positional advantage. And I think that is usually a, a good idea. Like bishop a7, the bishop goes back all the way to, uh, to, the, to that square, maintaining the pressure down um, the a7, g1 diagonal, bishop c4 played. And how is black going to strengthen his position? On which side of the board is black going to play? Is it on the queen side, maybe occupying the b file or try to uh, come to the, to the d file, maybe swap bishops? No way. These pieces, they are standing there, but they are pretty useless. They cannot exert any pressure. So you're not really interested in initiate the exchange of, um, of minor pieces. And instead, the plan by Abdus Sotorov is very, very instructive. He goes for h5. Maybe not an obvious move yet, but very, very useful. Rook ab1 played. The queen comes to e7. Now you think, okay, why the queen is going there? Well, after another rook move, rook e1, the knight goes to h7 and all of a sudden it becomes clear. All the moves are coming well together. What... Uh, what black is contemplating here. Like the queen wants to go to h4, like queen e2 was played, queen h4 attacking the pawn on uh, on e4. Then again, you got to make a decision on how to uh, how to defend the pawn. If you play something like f3, maybe knight g5 is an idea, but then you got to reckon with the exchange of a queen. So I don't think that's the way to go, knight g5. But after f3, I do like this plan of knight f8, Knight e6 with the idea to come to f4. And then you see that the dark squares on the king side are absolutely vulnerable. If you ever take on f4, it's pawn takes f4, attacking the knight on e3. That knight on e3 is actually pretty bad. So instead of playing f3, uh, Fauci uh, played the move knight f1. So uh, protecting the pawn on uh, e4. Knight g5, the knight is coming into the game. Look at these three pieces. They are eyeing the uh, pawn on h3. So there are potential sacrifices. Uh, white got to deal with that. Knight h2, that, that helps the, the king quite a bit. So the king can, after that, always uh, hide on, um, on h1 in the corner. But rather than looking for sacrifices, black tries to keep it simple with another very impressive move, f5. Exerting more pressure against the pawn on e4. And if you do take on f5, you're not going to recapture. The fourth rank has been opened. And that means the bishop on uh, c4 is just uh, hanging. So very nice positional play leading to a massive attack for, uh, for black. Knight f3, offering the exchange of, uh, of knights. Knight takes, queen takes. It looks as if the worst is uh, behind for, for white. But now... Black marches forward with the f pawn. Excellent move, f4. And if black, if it's black's turn here, then they will come. G5, g4, attacking the queen, hitting the pawn on um, on h3. And if you're ever gonna take, you take back with the pawn. The rook can come over to the h file. There are devastating mating threats against that uh, king. So the queen goes back to d1. And now, well, rook f8. Look at this, guys. The plan is very, very simple. You want to push your pawn to f3. Now, the drawback is that the pawn on e5 is hanging, which was uh, played in the game. Knight takes e5. But I want to show you how dangerous that f pawn is. Let's say after a random move, let's say rook b2, you can go f3. If you go g3 to keep the f file closed, it's queen takes h3 with mate to come. So that doesn't work. While well, if you do take the pawn on f3, well, then the bishop comes in. This is completely hopeless. Like queen will come to g5. And there are mating uh, threats again. So, understandably, there is knight takes uh, e5. White is capturing the pawn, but now the knight no longer defends the pawn on f2. Bishop takes f2, king to h1. And this is actually quite an interesting moment, as there are various ways of, uh, of playing here. You can, of course, take the rook on e1, but look at this. Abdus Satorov goes here for the move rook d8. He's attacking the queen. 
And uh, well, the, the queen is in trouble. The queen gotta gotta move her queen e2 plate. And now another fantastic idea is bishop takes h3. So once again, you're not taking the rook on e1. You're removing that very important defender of the king. Now any sort of check on b7 doesn't really uh, help here at all. You can go back with the bishop to d7 with discover checkmate. Beautiful idea. Therefore. Instead, uh, of course, I should also mention that g takes h3, queen takes h3 is checkmate, but I thought that is obvious for, for everyone. So after bishop takes h3, Fauci played here the move knight f3, attacking the queen, but the queen comes into g3, threatening mate in one. And that, uh, that looks crushing. By the way, the rook can still be taken uh, very soon, but that's not what's going to happen, uh, guys. Look at this. The knight is in defense. White captures the bishop on h3. And this is the key moment. How do you strike here? You may pause the video here for a second. And hopefully then you decide not to take with the queen on h3. Which is not a bad move. But white can still uh, stop the mate here. Now the knight interferes on h2. If you do take on e1, rook takes e1. You capture another pawn. Okay, probably the, the rook should be better than the two minor pieces. I, I don't like the, the cooperation between white's forces here. But... There is an absolutely brilliant move to finish uh, the game here for, uh, for Black. Can you spot it one more time? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then it is indeed this move, uh, Rook D2. Excellent, excellent deflection uh, motive as you are uh, entering uh, without knocking on the, on the door. This is a stunning deflection uh, sacrifice. Attacking the Queen, if you do take with the Knight, First of all, there is queen takes h3. Now there's no longer this uh, move knight h2. That is the first point of the, the sacrifice. Well, if you do take with the queen, well, then you can take the knight first with check. King can only go to h2, but then it's queen g3, king h1, and checkmate on h3 again. So that also doesn't work. So the only move which remains is uh, queen f1, but then you can also uh, just take the knight and this, uh, this should lead to mate very soon. Or let's say if you block here with the queen on g2, you can swap to queens. And at the end of the day, there is bishop takes e1 with a discover check. Black is up a full rook. And of course, that's something you don't want to play on against uh, number five in the world. So therefore, after rook d2, white reside. Absolutely stunning mating attack. But it all starts with very... Very good, sound positional chess. You can see that White was missing his uh, dark squared bishop for a long period of time. And, uh, well, you cannot exploit such an uh, factor immediately. But in the long run, you see how powerful this uh, dark squared bishop of Black eventually uh, became. So, very instructive game. Hopefully you liked it. Once again, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. Thanks for all the support. We move on to 10k subscribers and way beyond. So... Keep it go coming in. Thanks for doing so. Bye-bye.